Welcome back for our third Intel drop on the Constellation class frigate. Now three years behind schedule, 759 tons heavier than planned, and frozen out of the FY26 shopping list. If the lead ship is only 10% built, and Congress won't fund Hull 7, has the Navy's frigate of the future already slipped beneath the waves? GAO's June audit didn't just flash a warning light, it detonated the klaxon. The lead Constellation is 759 metric tons heavier than its original spec a 13% surge that drags displacement past 8,000 tons. Most of that girth comes from the Navy's own gold plating, shock hardening for near-miss torpedoes, a CBR citadel, thicker bulkheads for Arctic ops, and the decision to bolt on the much heftier spy, 6 version 3 radar, instead of the Italian frigate's lighter set. Engineering slides show the hull stretched 7 meters and the beam widened 0.6 meters, yet commonality with its frem parent has crashed from 85% to barely 15%. That weight spike slashes the growth reserve the Navy penciled in for 2,040 era tech. Constellation's 10% margin, 800 tons, is now half eaten, leaving a skinny 400 tons for future lasers, hypersonic interceptors, or an extra spy six face. Naval architects whisper that sprint speed could tumble below 26 knots unless mass is hacked or horsepower boosted, meaning a cod lag regear or composite deckhouse swap could be on the table for Flight 2. Design war rooms are grinding through an emergency ounce hunt, swapping high-strength steel for HY-80, trimming topside boat davits, even shrinking the aviation fuel tank. Every saved kilogram rescues not just knots, but calendar days, because a heavier hull needs longer alignment windows before blocks can be welded. Calendar trouble is exactly where this weight fight points next. Construction kicked off in April 2024 with a 72-month build promise. 26 months later, only approximately 10% of the ship is physically complete, and delivery has slid three full years to April 2029. GAO labels the program stalled, noting that functional design packages are arriving at the yard after the steel they describe has already been cut, a concurrency death spiral that idles welders and forces rework. Navy auditors calculate that, to hit the new 2029 handover, Marinette must triple its current completion rate from 0.7% to 2.3% per month for the next 46 months, an acceleration unseen in modern America shipbuilding. Capitol Hill smells blood. Senator Roger Wicker blasted Navy leaders for altering almost 70% of the requirements mid-build and warned, you've turned a five-year frigate into a 10-year science project. Representative Rob Whitman pitched an ultimatum at Sea Airspace 2025, demonstrate schedule recovery by next spring or find another whole strategy. An independent review team, chartered in February, now shuttles weekly between Nav C and Marinette, chasing root cause slips down to individual work orders. Clock math is merciless. Every month lost now adds $24 million in yard overhead, according to GAO's sensitivity tables, and pushes follow-on hulls deeper into overlap, which brings us to the fiscal year 26 budget, where the Navy just slammed the procurement brakes. The FY26 requests zeroes out funding for a seventh frigate, a stark pivot from FY25's $1.2 billion line item. Instead, the Navy seeks only $684 million in cost to complete cash to finish the first six hulls, signaling that design stability, not serial production, is the new priority. Breaking defense notes, this makes 2026 the first year since 2020 without at least one constellation on the books, while $1.7 billion is steered toward unmanned surface prototypes, systems that could shoulder missions a struggling frigate might forfeit. House appropriators doubled down. In a June 9th markup, they fenced off any later ad back until the frigate program meets a design complete threshold certified by GAO. Analysts warn of a classic death spiral. No new orders means thinning learning curves, rising unit costs, and workforce attrition. For Marinette, every missed annual award equates to roughly 400,000 labor hours of workload evaporating. Local unions say a second skipped hull could shed 600 trade jobs by Christmas. The Navy argues the pause buys breathing room to finish drawings and beat back weight. Critics counter that, without a steady drumbeat of hull starts, suppliers will hike prices or exit, inflating the very cost the pause hopes to tame. And the drawings are exactly where the next crisis lurks. Five years post-award, Constellation's functional design is still only 70% mature, a jaw-dropping retreat from the 92% completeness Navy briefed in 2023. Each late change, Spy 6 back fit, cyber-hardening cable trays, revised shock mounts, 
forces redraws of thousands of pipe runs and brackets. GAO, over 20,000 engineering change requests have flooded the yard since keel laying, enough paper to fill a destroyer's magazine. The result, FMM is cutting steel without final drawings, betting that mid-build mods can be shimmed in later. NAVCA's independent review calls the practice schedule Russian roulette, warning that late structural inserts could ripple weight and alignment across five already laid keel blocks. Even the touted digital twin tool set, a selling point for Fincantieri, lags a year behind, meaning block fits still rely on manual lofting rather than laser scan jigs. One sacrifice option now circulating dropped from 32 to 24 MK41 cells on follow-on hulls to claw back weight and design hours. Admirals hate the optics, but insiders note the Frem parent runs just 16. Shipbuilders counter that ripping out weapons for paperwork is like selling the engine to finish the car. Leadership turbulence is inevitable, and it just arrived at the top of Fincantieri Marine Group. On July 1st, 2025, Fincantieri installed crisis manager George A. Mutafis as CEO, handing him a mandate to stabilize program execution, arrest attrition, and re-baseline cost. Mutafis inherits a yard that has poured $800 million into new panel lines and a 400-ton Goliath crane, yet still fights a 15% skilled labor vacancy. His first act, a 5K tax-free childcare stipend, plus a 10K blue-collar retention bonus, bankrolled jointly by the Navy and Wisconsin's Economic Development Fund, an admission that regional welders are being poached by Foxconn and drone plant startups. Plant managers say every 1% manpower gap adds two days of slip per month. By that math, filling the roster could claw back 60 days in 2025 alone. Mutafis has also opened talks with Bath Ironworks to lease senior pipe fitters for 18-month rotations an unheard of crossyard rescue that underscores just how thin the industrial base has become. But none of it matters if Congress chokes the pipeline. Marinette's demand curve shows a cliff after hull six in 2027. Lose that follow-on work and the freshly hired talent walks, taking the frigate's future with it. So the yard races to prove it can weld on time, on budget, and on weight. But even a perfect build can't rewrite physics. The growth margin is running on fumes. Growth margin is a warship's insurance policy and Constellation already cashed in half of it. The design budgeted 10% displacement headroom, about 800 tons, to absorb decades of tech creep. The current 759 tons bloat leaves roughly 400 tons, but GAO warns that figure hinges on optimistic weight discipline assumptions. Hardware wish lists grow longer by the quarter. NAVC's directed energy roadmap slots a 150 kilowatt laser onto flight two, demanding three megawatts of power and 25 tons of prime movers plus cooling. Hypersonic interceptors would need an even beefier spy, six version four array, and expanded combat systems racks, another 60 tons. Meanwhile, China's new type 054B just commissioned at 5,500 tons with room for future 32 cell upgrades and dual band ASA, signaling Beijing can iterate faster on a lighter hull. Inside OpNav, planners sketch ugly trade-offs cannibalize a boat bay for the laser, sacrifice range by shrinking fuel bunkerage, or delete two VLS modules for bigger generators. Any option slows the Pacific fight before the ship even sails. Lose the margin, lose flexibility. Lose flexibility, risk obsolescence by the 2030s. The clock, the budget, and the scale tip in opposite directions. In the wrap-up, we'll ask, if Congress yanks funding again next year, does the Navy scrap the frigate dream? or double down to avoid ceding blue water dominance to Beijing. The Navy now stares at a brutal fork in the sea lane. Option A, pour billions more into a frigate already three years late, 759 tons overweight and starving for growth space. Option B, slam the hatch, pivot to smaller unmanned shooters and pray the Pacific doesn't light up before those swarms mature. In March 2026, GAO drops its next audit and two weeks later, the FY27 markups begin. One bad report card could freeze the line, detonate layoffs at Marinette, and hand Beijing a propaganda coup. America can't finish a mid-sized warship, yet pull the plug too soon and the fleet's 2020s cruiser gap widens into the 2030s. So here's the cliffhanger. If you were CNO for a day, what walks the plank first? Speed, missiles, or the entire program? Drop your call sign in the comments and brief us on the cuts you'd make or the tech you'd spare. While you're there, hit subscribe and ring the bell. We're tracking every keel block, budget vote, and laser prototype.
And you'll want front row intel when Congress decides whether Constellation sails or sinks next spring. Because in the Indo-Pak chess match, the clock keeps ticking even when the welders stop. And the side that outruns its own paperwork usually outruns the enemy's missiles. Will the US frigate of the future beat the buzzer or become the Navy's next cautionary tale? Your move, Admirals.